everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Felt a great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, I got a job for me. Meet me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. All I do is, like, I get into the most entertaining conversation with you guys. They're provocative and they're fun. Yeah, hey, Douglas and David, i got to say, I was interviewed on NPR by Scott Simon, another hero, but you guys are my new heroes, and I easily include you into the Scott Simon milieu of brilliant guys on radio. Oh, man. wow, so. thank you. How about that? Ooh, that's a nice way to start. Peter Weller himself complimenting David Cohen, Douglas Viviani, everything old is new again, and here we are, back and ready to roll to provide yet more fun, thrills, excitement to the radio start those arguments you love to have have some contemporary nostalgia right before your ears i would like to say that david cohen is here the best co-hosted radio david ah thank you doug you're the best host in radio (laughs) and we should have peter back on he's so complimentary. And He's the best guest in the right. Why am I speaking like this? I Isn't like he the I'm best? I'm nervous because we have a special guest here with us in the studio, and I'll just turn it over to you. Just like that. She is. She's right here. Right. I'm looking right out of the beautiful Michelle DeFranco. Why <laughs> is she here? What's going on? She's wiping the tears from her eyes. I don't know if that's <laughs> tears of happiness or sadness or pain or sorrow but maybe we can explain that david cohen where are we going with this so michelle uh is my lovely wife and you know she knows doug and i we we, we've been doing this show for years and uh she's yet to hear it so she just hears me talk about it a lot and i figured the best way to introduce her to the show is maybe to just have her bring her on to 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 a live recording of it and give us her honest feedback. Why not, right? I mean, we're all about honesty. So this is 100% legit. Let me just tell our listeners out here that that Michelle's coming on having not heard too much of what we do. And this show is going to be about showing her the best of the show and getting her honest feedback She's going to be 100% upfront with us. I think they get it. They us. get it. They get it. See, what you may want to do is... You I'm actually, nervous. I'm not, you know... Right, but you may want to actually yeah. talk it to the microphone. That's the only critique I would have at this point. So Who, me? <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Is that better? <laughs> yes, that is better. We did hear you. Want you want me to but... say everything again? No, please don't. Oh, God, but... no, please. <laughs> All right, Michelle, thank you for coming on board. And you have actually been on the show a number of times. You, you are probably up there, I would say, seven or eight shows at this point. Um, but you haven't heard the show. And no, so no, that I, I am, haven't. yes, I'm even it's the one. Into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start off. This is way back when in the beginning, and we started with our very fo- first guest. Do you remember Jay Johnson from Soap, the ventriloquist? Maybe not, but I we, do. yeah, okay, no, I do. We, we had him on the show. We tried it, we did something a little bit that we always try to do a little something different than you usually hear on the radio. So let's just a little smidge of the interview there. Uh, we'll start off with Charlie McCarthy. Um, you just talked about him, Edgar Bergen. All right, Jay, how about yeah. Bob Campbell? Well, he, he was tough. I think he, he belonged to Chuck Campbell, which was who was played by Jay Johnson. There you go. <laughs> so. How about Pedro, uh, Dave? Oh, you just mentioned that too, uh, yes. Senior Wences. Good, okay. How about Darwin the Jazz Monkey, Jay? <laughs> you know, I think this is a rigged contest. I, I think I know this guy. Yeah, Darwin the, Darwin the Jazz Monkey belonged to, uh, to me. And, uh, uh, it, uh, yeah, Darwin, uh, that's me. Uh, Knucklehead Smith, Dave, didn't mention him. <sighs> Paul Winchell. Paul Winchell. And finally, how about Nethermore, the Bird of Death, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Never know the bird of death. Jay Johnson uh, made his debut in uh, Jay Johnson, the two and only. He was a great guest. We were just trying to do something different. We did a little bit of a quiz show with him and trying to find out different ventriloquist dummies and who were the cool. uh, the one that stood behind them. So, um, you know, we do that. We do celebrity interviews. We do characters. She's, <laughs> Michelle's rolling her eyes. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, I think you have to be super into ventriloquism to really be like hooked into that one but also what i what i've noticed is that uh the voice the quality of the sound with you guys is much better now from what i'm noticing thank you yeah it sounded like you guys were just like 
in a room somewhere, you know. That was our original studio in a uh, in the MacArthur Airport, and it was done professionally oh, yeah. for a radio station. I think station. you've really upgraded, from what I can tell, just by listening to you guys today. Yeah, we had to sneak in the radio bef- before flights. And <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Remember, there were times, David, where they, were, they were singing Christmas carols and things, holiday carols, whatever, out the you know by the Christmas tree and the Hanukkah, uh, you know, menorah and all that by <laughs> right outside. The yeah, room. it was literally the studio was literally in an airport, and it was soundproof, but. Not completely soundproof. So, yeah, people were singing Christmas carols for the holidays. And, yeah, we just ended up just opening the door and letting it on the air. Now, what we did also, we interview authors sometimes. And here's an author uh, that has a, a book come out. We did four shows with him on Rod Serling, his life, work, and imagination, uh, Nick Parisi. And we introduced uh, a little something. We opened the doors up to ourselves, too, to have some ridicule and fun. So uh, we had a band back in the day, so we mentioned that. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because we're here with the editor of this magazine that existed back in the 70s when we did that song and were a band in 1979. I don't know that you were an editor of the magazine. No, then. I came along lo- long after that. But you've heard about this, this review. I know it's on a board somewhere. <laughs> For the news, I'm going to read you this. I can see if we can get a kick out of this. The news headlines their performances with the best of the Beatles, Cars, Nick, Kinks in the Knack, and the records, as well as Dave's popish New Wavis original. The band has an inbred sense of humor. They perform the version <laughs> of the Twilight Zone theme that stands out as their best live tune. They also include various psych eggs in their act, and the group peppers their show with general comic relief. And they have a demo tape, blah, blah, and there's a quote, our originals have a unique new original sound, and our live show is a gaff. That's the review wow. in the Good Times magazine right here. Who I wrote have that? It. Did you write that? No, I don't know who wrote that. I was going to ask Nick if you have any idea who wrote that. I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> so we kind of uh, promoted, self-promoted ourselves there during the interview of Nick uh, Parisi and... <laughs> that was really fun. What I would love to hear in, as part of that, what I would have loved to hear is a clip of the... Do you have you any of the music recorded from the news? All right, here, here you go. Asking you shall receive. There we go. Could you? It's, it's wow, old, old, that's old really tip. good. <laughs> I've never heard you guys. I, I know that you guys were in this band. I've heard of the news. We talk about it often and joke about it. But that sounded really good to me. Honest to God, that really sounded good. Thank you very I mean, much. It wasn't that loud. I don't know how you're, what you're playing it through, but we actually. I brought a cassette player back in 1979 to the Candlewood High School and played it, and and so that's oh. sort of you know it really hard to. The technology wasn't what it is today, you know. Uh, but oh, I see. It was really sounded good, though. Thank you. Well, listen to this, and we can we can expand. Okay. This is the last clip of us at Candlewood, you know, the junior high school, of course, around the corner. Mm-hmm. And we were there playing, and uh, and on our show, Meet the Host, we kind of laid bare all of our experiences with the news and more. We how we had so many songs, and at some point, the concert went a little bit long. <laughs> and so you turn to the audience and say this. Let's see if you can hear this. Hey, is there one you'd like to hear again? <laughs> like, if you can hear that, they're screaming. First of all, there's two things. Number one, Billy you're Joel? asking if they would like to hear a song again that we've already played, and the reaction clearly is no. <laughs> and the second part is then they say, "What well, would you like? What would you like to hear?" When they're screaming out "Freebird," that you heard right heard, many yeah. times, and you turn around and you say. Okay, my Sharona. <laughs> and we didn't know Freebird. <laughs> Here we go. So, bearing our soul on the air. You've not heard any of that, have you, Michelle? <laughs> I have never heard that. That is hilarious. <laughs> I know that David tells me the joke about how they always, that the kids used to scream out, 
Billy Joel, Billy <laughs> Joel, and that's so we still we still chant that just very often. Yeah, we're joking around, and we didn't have Billy Joel in our repertoire for some reason. Correct. <laughs> so we couldn't do that. Uh, we did the best we could. I, I just found it was it's good fun, different radio. No one hears some of this stuff of people what they did before. Well, it, it's and... also great. It goes right with your theme of everything old is new again. Like you know, you bringing on the stuff that you guys did when you were young is a great i think that's a really good thing to do it's too bad it's i just wish the quality of the yeah. sound was better somehow you could get it better so because that's really funny and and interesting and i have a lot of tapes like we could i could kind of go get more stuff like that and see if i any better yeah, i'm tapes. sure you could hand, enhance no. somehow the uh the quality of right. the audio Plus, we had that. We did a demo, right? In an actual studio. We sure did. We'll go out on that right now here on Everything Old is New Again. We'll be right back. And this is the song that David Cohen uh, created and rose, I guess he rose the charts at uh, Candlewood Junior High School with this. And Half Hollow Hills High School, she was a Jap. This is Anson Mount, and you're listening to Everything Old is New Again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Hi, this is Karen Allen. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. How about that? So now I don't need to introduce it. We've had uh, some some pretty big people on the show. David? Did, like we, we had some really big ones. Did Alan Alda ever do a return for us? He sure did. Absolutely. He's coming up next. Next section, I have that. Okay, cool. All right. So, <laughs> not to brag. Yeah, we've got some good stuff. Um, we we really have lucked into these celebrity interviews as we really it's not part of our yeah. formula. I mean, but... I've heard about them along the years, and it, it's it's just when you when you kind of consolidate it and think about it, it's it's pretty impressive. I think it's good for you guys to step back and take account of everything you've done. I'm actually really impressed. I was thoroughly ready to be underwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> prepared and i was looking forward to being underwhelmed and like a lot of like eh, you know like that kind of thing what <laughs> actually we still have a lot of show left. Yeah, i'm like <laughs> i i have to give it i have to give you guys credit i think this is very cool i think thank you i appreciate yeah. that michelle and uh, and i think something you you might like is the next clip is us doing uh, a play called blood red roses that we tried to do a radio play on the air hey can i have some of those roses of course thanks your blood red roses goodbye nick what's gotten into that boy has the whole world gone crazy why don't you go and live with him you know what you're talking about? He's chosen a new way of life. Unless that way becomes your way, you'll never see him again. Ugh, how can I ever stop being Jerry Bissett? How? You Answer can't. me. You can't. And that's why he's been taken away from you. You've lost him. An eye for an eye, a tooth for tooth, and a son for a son. Payment in kind, and that's the most satisfying revenge there is. How about that? Oh, I remember that. I think I was in that. Yes. Um, I think, and I don't mean... <laughs> I think, Doug, that you sounded like you were really into that character and understood what was going on with the character. I love the, I, I mean, David sounded like announcery, I thought, yeah. a little announcery in that, like, you know, yeah. a radio announcer or something right. like that. Okay. But I like the idea of the radio play. I think you should continue doing that. It really could be a lot of fun. I, I don't think you hear much of it on the radio they, at all. And if it's done right and done well, it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. You know? It could just be short. It could just be little short That's true. plays. It doesn't have to be a whole That's little true. five minute little five minute plays well we'll something. see what happens we'll try that we do also do a little bit of uh once in a while we'll do some quizzes ask the listeners to, to fight along with me on this one and uh, see if they can guess these as well this is not an easy easy task no we we, we made it pretty difficult right mike yeah we did all right we're gonna start with the first one you ready yes Ah, Beast from 20,000 Phantoms, no doubt. Uh, Ray Harryhausen's 1953. I'm going to lose this bet. All right, let's, <laughs> let's, let's go for the oh next one. Oh, my God. Go if you get this one, it's over. <laughs> Easy. That is the, the turtle that walks on two legs and flies. Gamera. Right. He can battle with the best of them. All right, two for two. Let's go. Next one. 
Well, if I don't get that one, there's trouble. I could say, put it this way, that is Godzilla, but from the 1960s. Uh, by the way, this is everything old is new again, and we're challenging ourselves, if you will. Everything on, old is weird again. <laughs> on all the right. giant monster movie quiz of all quizzes. Literally our second show, I believe. Maybe our wow. third show, yeah. Um, wow, for the second show, it's really good. We were just, you know, trying to do uh, something different, but besides that, you know, really got to be nerdy to really. <laughs> it was a very well, specific like topic, I, you know. I, like the same thing with the ventriloquist. Like, right. I'm going to check out if it's about, you know, old monster movies. But I know that there's a lot of there are a lot of people who are totally into that. So, you know, it, it's it doesn't matter what I would, you know. But, you know, part of, part of it is, and I agree with you, but, and we've gotten a little more general, but part of it is because a topic changes every single week that the listener has to kind of be friendly, if you will, or like, let's say, David Cohen and I as personalities, and they'll go through whatever the topic exactly. is with us. That's what I was going to say. Like, even like the thing is, you guys are so you guys are so appealing. And that being your second show, I mean, I I. I think that's a really great start. So I don't really think it matters what the topic is. If you guys are fun and having fun, it's just very contagious. And that's what the show is about. Not so much like, oh, I, I mean, I'm going to check out of the monster stuff, but it's still fun to listen to you guys. Right, to on play on. between the two of you, no matter what the subject is, is the thing that keeps people listening and, and, and engaged, I think. I would hope so. David Cohen? Absolutely. David's very silent. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, I'm taking it all in. Okay, so let's hear one more clip of David reading a list of movies. We talk about Dracula, and we're trying to figure out why are there so many Dracula movies and all this, and just as an aside. And the audience, how ridiculously overdone Dracula has been. Okay, I'm going to read to you now every movie title that has the word Dracula in it oh, since, since the beginning of film. You ready? Yes, Here I we go. love it. Batman Dracula, Batman fights Dracula, Batman versus Dracula, Billy the Kid versus Dracula, Blackula, Blood for Dracula, Blood of Dracula, good, Blood of Dracula's Castle, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula 1973, Bram Stoker's Dracula's Curse, The Brides of Dracula, Count Dracula 1970, Count Dracula 1977, Dark Prince, The True Story of Dracula, Dr. Dracula, Dracula 1931 film, Dracula Spanish language film, Dracula 1958 film, Dracula 1979 film, Dracula 2002 film, Dracula 2006 film, Dracula 2000. <laughs> Thousand, that's the title, Dracula 2000. Dracula 2000. Hate to say this, but that list went on for another, <laughs> like another Wait, minute. Wasn't one of them Dracula's dog? <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> Dracula versus Billy the Kid. I remember that one. Those are all movies? <laughs> yes. That's what wow. we, we try to bring also, and I know this is a critique that I heard way back when, you know, and it, it, it really is important uh, to bring something, even though, let's just say Dracula, everyone knows who Dracula is, but bring a new take on it or bring some at least a new way to present the information that we're presenting uh, and i thought that was you know, a fun way that david had to come up with with this it's, yeah reading. it's just it's it is funny it's just that the the more he says the names the, the longer the list the more absurd it gets and so just to know those are actually movies is just hilarious and like, alarming david you remember really reading that list that was got to be five years ago but i mean it went on oh, sure of quite a long time and then, yeah, I don't remember whether we got through. We probably didn't get through all of them. No, but there were literally like a hundred different names with Dragon. And we did it with another kind of show. I forget what it was. It may have been yeah. Monster Movies or something, where we competed against we each competed other. We said, uh, "How many can you read in thirty seconds?" And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we it, it, it just you know, just something different. But it, uh, that's that's the whole point of the show is uh, to try to attract someone like yourself, Michelle, and and that. Maybe listens once or twice. You, you get the topic you like, and then you say, "You know what? I'm going to click in because uh, or tune in because I'm not so sure what they're going to do in the next section or the section after that about a topic like that, which has been covered so many different times." Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think for myself, uh, I think it skews. I'll be really honest. Can I be really honest? Of course, yeah. we know what it skews. Just we, a little no to the male population. Yes. You know, a little bit older male i think it's important to have a have a targeted audience i'm not so i'm not saying that's that's bad i think it's good to have a very targeted audience 
At the same time, for me personally, like if you had more, even in just the clips, more female voices, more like of the actress actresses and the old time stuff that like Hazel and and stuff like that that I grew up on, or like you know uh, Julia, the, you know the old time shows, and then I that I could reminisce with and I could get nostalgic about them. Uh, then I think that there's something to that, like that nostalgic, oh yeah, I remember that. And it reminds, it brings you back. So a woman's point of yeah, view. Yeah, none, none of this brings me back to anything. Right, because right. Because I wasn't listening to, I wasn't watching, you know, and like I said, it doesn't matter because you could have a targeted audience. Right, you can't be all things to all people, but I agree with you 100%. We, we have tried, we've not been a majority of the time. We did do, you know, comedians. We did a focus on a couple of shows just on, uh, you know, uh, Mary Tyler Moore we did and, and, uh, and, and Rhoda, if you remember, and so forth, David. It, but it was a, a small, you're right, it's a small, that was one. Yeah. you know, yeah, it's a small section yeah. uh, of yeah. that. So it is something to be much more aware of. Uh, we had Lee Merriweather on, we had Karen Allen on, and the, uh, I agree with you, that is something that uh, we need to open uh, our eyes to more. Yeah, I just think, know? like, you guys, I think that what I'm getting from just listening is that, you know, it bring you know, it, it's sort of like bringing you back, not being one of these, like, curmudgeonly people that's like, oh, things used to be better back then, but just, like, that kind of wistful bringing you back, but also the joyfulness of the stuff going on today and tying it together. Okay, and, and further along those lines, that is true, where we try to make it contemporary. In other words, we're looking back at the past, yes, but we're not looking back at the past and staying there. Uh, we're right. then bringing it forward and saying, well, what's happening now with, like we did a show on the Disney princesses, you know, and, and a couple of shows on the Disney princess, and, and what are they doing See, that's now? interesting to me. Yeah. Well, we, we have that. We've got a number of those shows. We can definitely... Uh, you know, look back and and enjoy that we at least uh, did that. And I think you're right. We want to open more to that. But uh, ag again, just the idea is uh, that what's happening today, and maybe what's the future with some of these topics as well. I think is is fun and important. Yeah, and I think maybe just a little bit more acknowledgement of how maybe some of the attitudes have changed since then, and just kind of like, and it doesn't have to be like an in depth political discussion or something like that, but just like acknowledging, you know. Uh, that some of the attitudes in terms of gender and stuff like that and gender roles, maybe just as one example, have have changed or opened up a little bit. Would it would be would it not take it out of the too far away from your theme, but it would open it up a little bit. Right. Right, I agree, and uh, we've done a little of that too. I would say all of those we've done a little because David uh, is very good with that as well. I'll say something like, "I don't know, mankind," and, and he'll correct me and things like that. So uh, th this this is important, and it is interesting to get your point of view, and I appreciate that. We will be back for more discussion and uh, evaluation, and let's put it this way: everything old is new again is on the couch with Michelle DeFranco. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back right this. Now, back to America's Entertainment Pop Culture Talk Show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Hi, this is Alan Alda, and you're listening to Everything Old is New Again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Hi, this is Lee Merriweather. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again with Doug Viviani and David Cohen. <sighs> they are great guys. How about that? We're back here and everything old is new cool. again with it. Michelle DeFranco. Michelle, does that make you a little, just a touch, a twinge, anything of, of jealousy that Lee Merriweather, Miss America, says that your yes. husband is a great guy? Or does it give I you some pride, very maybe? cool. I'm super impressed with what you guys are doing, honestly. Oh. Then, but uh, let me just point out that that's all Doug, because Doug oh, relentlessly I I pursues that, yeah. these guests, and, and he's had some great ones. And, um, yeah, that, that's all him. Yeah, it's really impressive. Thank you. I appreciate that, David. And it, it, it is uh, a labor of love, so that's why it's... You know, uh, it's obviously a labor of love. You could tell. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's very I, contagious. And I could not, and honestly, this is not just saying I could not do it 
sitting here alone is no doubt and uh, to have it's someone fun with other people yeah and but to have someone where you could say stuff with and you just you know they're not going to get offended or you know you know what the boundaries are and whatever and we just go off we we know each other since we're 16 so you know it's okay you know what I mean? like if we whatever happens on topics it's good to know who you are what the show is and just stick with that and speaking of which we we did we do disagree sometimes and uh, here's a little little piece of a, a sword fight that david cohen and i had uh, and I forget what the top. Oh, TV theme songs. We were arguing which is the best TV theme song. Yeah. On guard. Let's give it a shot. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. <laughs> Prepare to die. <laughs> well? well? I've got another one better. The Black Cells. Hopefully this is... The American Horror Story and not some bogus song. You this is creepy. How about Game of Thrones? I do think that the first round went to you with Mad Men. Put your sword down, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and the <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> Theme songs for the dramas. Ow! <laughs> so just a little fun with some sound effects there. And, uh, uh, we but that was heavily edited, too. Right? No, I that one? Oh yeah, I did it a little bit. Yes, yes, it was. It, it was yeah, because you couldn't really hear the theme songs that we were dueling over. Right, it wasn't fair. We yeah, there were theme songs in between. We broke that up. It wasn't played like that. And oh, the, the sound okay. effects of the of the swords. But so, you could hear the the theme songs. Uh, yeah, so the we, actual. Oh, got gotcha. yeah. you. Okay, so in between, when we said that's a particular that's... song, you know, a theme song, we would take a break. You'd hear the song and then get back to the. Sword oh, fight. okay. So yeah, maybe that, otherwise that was a little, a little yeah. confusing. What was going on? Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So. Uh, but we've had arguments. We've had arguments like the Peanuts versus the Muppets, and which is the best franchise? Something like that. You remember that, David? Oh, really? Yeah, we've done stuff I like that. I could get in on that. I could. That's an argument I could get into. Where do you Definitely. fall? Are you a Muppets or a Peanuts? I live and breathe Peanuts. I love Peanuts. She's into the Peanuts. How about that? I love Peanuts. We have a guest star here with us right now. Who, oh look, Michelle! Michelle has a Snoopy doll right there. Leo, Leo Viviani has just joined us. See it? There it is. Two of them. Oh, she's a big Peanuts fan. And now you, what? You, this one laughs. That one that sings. Talk into the microphone. That one that sings. So you have one that sings. Yeah. And that's a, the Peanuts, right? Talk into the microphone. And sit down, my man. And so the question is this, Leo? But you like Leo just read a biography of Jim Henson. And so, Leo, do you like the Muppets or the Peanuts better? Which one? Muppets. Talk it to the microphone, my man. Muppets. <laughs> and I mean, Muppets is like, uh, just, the Muppets are great. I yeah. mean, nothing against the Muppets at all. And David was also a, a Peanuts guy, if I remember. And so we were fighting yeah. over that. But why do you like the I Muppets mean, how, so much? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, why do you like the Muppets? Leo, why do you like the Muppets so much? I don't know. Come on, tell us. Well, who's your favorite Muppet? Kermit the Frog is the favorite. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll let you get back to your breakfast. So, yes, yeah, so we have <laughs> some goofy topics like that. You know, who's the the best Disney? Who's Michelle, who is your favorite Disney princess? Or do you I'm have one? I'm not a fan of Disney princesses. But I, if I'm going to be a fan of one, I probably like, like the more, you know, like Mulan, you know, like that. Tiana. Um, you know, uh, I I have a lot. I, I don't know. I, I'm... Well, we talked about issues with Disney princesses yes. in general. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. that was one of our very first shows. Yeah, yeah, we and we 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 re, sort of visited it again recently, and yeah, we talked about how they're uh, well, they're changing it, but how it came from and how odd and how different the society was. So there's something that, as an idea, Michelle, you were trying to bring it aboard, right? You're saying change yeah, things I think up a little that's bit. Great idea to like you know look at that and you know dig a little deeper but you know Doug, we haven't done a show like that in a long time right. where we take a popular culture topic that's re-emerged I mean, seriously we haven't done we, we, that was all we were about for a long time and we've we've I'm not commenting on whether it's good or bad, but we've definitely strayed from that. Don't you agree? Uh, define, flesh it out. You mean, in other words, a topic of, of something that happened in the past and how it's changed and juxtapose it to the way it is today. 
And I agree yes. with you. Yes, correct. That and, you know, which is a better franchise, this or that? We haven't done that in a long time either. Exactly. Um, we've been stuck uh, this year, and I think it's pandemic-related in some way, with a, a quite a number of interviews as well. And so that's kind of taken us, you know, off the path a little bit as well. So we've got to get, and I'm really struggling to get back, and, and I hate to say, I'm literally saying no to, to, to people as well, because I want to get back to you and I and doing our thing. I love the interviews, and I have no problem with them, but I don't want them to be even 50% of the show. And right now, it's, it's probably more than 50% this year with the pandemic, you know? And so by cutting those back, we'll have the time to reimagine some of these topics which i think are great one franchise versus the other um you know originally a, a, a franchise or a topic was this way and now it's morphed into this right something different like even yeah, the mummy the, the mummy was originally you know a, a, a male and male dominated and so forth the recent mummy was a female was it not really yes the recent the mummy, mummy was a female. Yes, the most the ro- most recent mummy. Mu- 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 the most the, recent. The most recent with with Tom Cruise was a female. They changed it. There so, was a mummy movie with Tom Cruise where the mummy was a female. <laughs> yes, wow, yes. I missed that. You, oh, well, go to everything old is new again. Dot biz, and you'll flesh that one out right. In but no, that's eyes. interesting. Something yes. like that is super interesting to me. Right. Yeah. So we did yeah. explore that quite a bit. So that was fun. But I agree, David. We want to come up with more of those. Uh, we also. I think, you know, what's kind of cool is looking back at the drive-in, as we talked about, and now how it, with this pandemic, the drive-in has got a whole new life. And why? That's a perfect topic, right, you know? to do a show on. Yeah, like what was it like with the drive-in and what are we doing now with these drive-ins? What's the difference and uh, and why did they go away and things like that? Yeah, you that's talk first hand about it, right? Yeah. You're going to one, Doug. I'm going to one tonight with Leo. Leo, you, yeah. I'm going to turn your mic on for a second. Leo, what are you doing tonight? Real quick. Watching a movie. Talking to the mic, my man. Watching a movie. Okay, and what movie are you watching? Freebirds. And where are you watching it? Uh, a drive-by. From the car? Yeah. Did you ever drive do that before? By. A drive-by. <laughs> a drive-by movie. Did you ever do that before, Leo? No. Never did it. Are you excited tonight? Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Mm-hmm. All right, there we go. Like, it's a lot of so leading questions. let's do a show where we can get your insight, Doug, because you were doing drive-ins when they were popular years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we can have Leo with his insight as a, as a first-time drive-in movie viewer. Yes. And I would be really interested in how they've changed. Like, how does it, like, you know, how do they get the sound in the, you know, is it an app yeah. or whatever? Or how, how they do it. How do they sell snacks? And I like that. All right. So let's do that. That's a great idea. How about this one? Yeah. Um, I'm going to just throw this at you. Um, looking for things to do at home during the pandemic and so forth. Leo and I stumbled upon, and they're not the only ones, Bob Ross, the artist. And you know the guy with the big hair? He's passed yeah, away. Yeah. But there's a lot of shows on YouTube. And Leo and I, we've done some painting. We just put the YouTube on. We got the canvases. We got our oil paints. We got our brushes, the whole bit. And we do a landscape. Right, Leo? Bob Ross? Wait. Here you go. Bob Ross looks like a poodle. He does look like a poodle. <laughs> You're right. Like poodle. And there's something so comforting about his voice and just what he, how he goes about it. It's really soothing. And in a half hour creates this... I, 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 masterpiece is kind of a really strong word, but it, this this work of art that is just beyond compare. I mean, have you seen the finished products ever? Love, you know? yeah, love it. It was great. So yeah. there's and a- now he's really in pop culture. It, you know, whatever would you call it, an icon? Yes, and wow. his son is taking after it now, and maybe we could do a little research and figure out some more of these kind of things, or even artists like this to, you know, because it looks like we're <laughs> we're still homebound for quite a while. Maybe I that's relevant, that you know. Well, his voice yeah. is also um, very soothing, that, and and there's now been a study about the resonance of his voice and other voices like that, and of course, it's escaping me now the name. But apparently it has it's a, a certain kind of voice that has a very soothing and calming effect, especially on people of pers- of uh, certain personality types. I wish I could remember the name. But anyway, that would also be another aspect of, of what he did and how he's popular. Yeah, definitely. All right, Mitch, I just made a note. We're going to do that. And we're going to come back one more section and see what uh, Everything Old is New About is going to do in the future to uh, to garner your listenership, if you will. We'll be back. Right at this. Everything Old is New Again. This is Bernie Coppell, also known as 
Siegfried from Get Smart, you are listening to Everything Old is New Again. You understand? Good. <laughs> Holy great interview! Hi, this is Burt Ward, Robin from TV's Batman. You're listening to Douglas Viviani and David Cohen's fabulous radio show, Everything's Old is New Again. To the Batmobile, citizens. Hi, this is Butch Patrick, and you're listening to Everything is Old is New Again. There we go. A couple of uh, uh, plants. I was right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> big fans. That was Butch Patrick, who was from the Monsters, of course, before that. Burt Ward, we know. And Bernie Capel from so many different things, including the Love Boat. Very cool. We are here with Michelle. Michelle, we're going to cut a promo with you later on and have you introduce. Oh, my goodness. So you I'm could so be, honored. Yes, that would be nice. Now, we're, we've got Everything Old is New Again on the, on the couch. We're always trying to improve. We're always trying to find new ideas of things to do. And Michelle, off the air, we were talking about, you know, Leo was in the studio a few moments ago and talking about, um, I was saying how we do a little Bob Ross and yeah. we kind of paint a little together with him. He's passed away, but uh, it is continuing. So that might be a, a kind of a topic that might be something of interest, you know, things you could do at home with your kids, pandemic wise, whatever. But more or less, you turned it into something else and, and feel free to expand. Well, I was just saying, like, the more personal the shows are, the more interesting they become and the more universal, like the more specific and personal uh you guys kind of just bring your own lives and the details of your own lives into the show i think people could can relate to them so not that you wouldn't be talking about uh you know monster movies and how they've been updated but just bringing your personal lives into the show like leo painting with bob ross and stuff like that i think people would really enjoy um being a fly on the wall Right, and we've kind of done that. We had, um, and I do want to do it more, we had Leo and Angelica on a number of times. We talked about The Greatest Showman. Remember, David, we created a song right then and there, uh, and we were trying That's to cool. get, get you to involved there. We also had them tasting chocolate food candies for the first time with barbecue and fondue and guys. The Oreo one. And you did one with the cookies, right? We did a the cookie Oreo. contest. That, that's the Oreo one, yeah. yeah. Cookie contest. Because people love that. Like, there are people who are just, like, absolutely making a living just from, like, showing their little their little domestic lives, you know, with their, their children or something like that. And they get, like, millions of people watching. You're right. So I think it's more about how you how people connect to those you know, to to your individual, whatever's you know, Leo painting, having, having Michelle on, right? Exactly. Oh yeah, like yeah. That's what we love um, to do. Yeah, I've got my brother on talking about no, the I, UFOs. This is and... not my way of trying to get in on the show. Oh it's no, really not, not at all. It's really not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very busy, busy. Well, we may have Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Barbecue guy back. Uh, how do we say it? Mrs. Barbecue gal or whatever back um, for sure. Uh, <laughs> that was good a couple of shows ago. Oh my gosh! Uh, let me just hear a little something. Uh, uh, something that went awry, but we tried to do a magic trick on the air. Remember this, David Cohen? Where you could I could predict your card. Um, over the air, over the radio at waves. Okay. Yeah, still the same, <laughs> same thing. So what's your number? Nine, 99. You have, all right, so you have a... It can't be 99. It can't be. You're wrong. <laughs> it's 99. What do you, Michael, what do you have? I got, I got 37 again. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> I, I, you know, something went askew, and I think I think what we need to do is show how difficult magic can be. <laughs> David, your number again. After you doubled, added three times by five, and added either one, two, three, or four for club, heart, spade, or diamond, was ninety nine. Is that correct? Yes. So your card. I'm going to tell you right now. You're laughing. Was an eight of diamonds. Yes. There you we got go. It. Michael, what was your card? All right. So that's a little complicated. It's a whole show, but the idea was, I, uh, you know, you have a card, and I've assigned different numbers to different things in the card, and I could tell you if I did my math right what the card would be it was a really good trick problem was i didn't do my math right correct david yeah do you remember that, that? funny though <laughs> yeah i mean i think the fact that it was funny you guys were having such a fun time that's that's the point of the show like, right. it, it wouldn't have been yeah. as interesting if you got it right yeah and Michelle, you had said something previously about something else we did before, and you were like, well, I thought we would stop and maybe do this over again. And there is a school of thought to do that. But to me, the mistakes are kind of just as fun as the, the show itself. I take, I do edit and take out the ums out every so often, to be honest. But other than that, uh, I don't really edit for much else uh, because I kind of I like that. Guys, I, I will 
It's a, totally. And you, your personalities are very fun. Um, and, you know, so when you make a mistake and you laugh about it or whatever, it's, it's, it's all in good humor. So it's, it's like good, clean fun. Speaking, Absolutely. speaking of good, clean fun, the last Absolutely. clip I'm going to play is a little something here we did with Tarzan. Again, something in, and just trying to show an older topic that have kind of been used so many times before. And we went and I think took it a different way. Let's just see if we have any fun with it. Go ahead. We're going to, going to try our own hand at a Tarzan yell. Stand back from your radios. Stand back from the microphone so it doesn't overmodulate. Here we go. go no. Sounded more Native American, but all right. All right, here's mine. You ready? Yo, Jane, over here! <laughs> I mean, that's what he's doing it for, right? <laughs> it is. Okay. It is. I'm going to try one more time. All right. Yeah. Yo, hey, hey, hey! That's a good one. What, what, that what was just pretty say? good. Yeah. How did that happened. I think we just had the argument you love to have in in uh, Tarzan talk. <laughs> Come on back. Everything almost new again. All right, I'll take the garbage out already. It's enough. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's <laughs> funny. It's hard to get these little clips. Just these silly you little guys things. Are terrible at that. <laughs> yeah. but it's very funny. You try it. Can you try it? Would you? Do you have oh. any inclination? It is so incredibly I have hard to do. Zero inclination to do a Tarzan <laughs> yell right now. <laughs> it, we talked about Maureen O'Hara quite a bit and how important she was, and we examined her uh, her yell. Right, David? It was. Just a little. Don't try to defend the show. Good Love we, it. Yeah, no, to, I need that... to be a little more diverse. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should have had Carol Burnett too. We've oh, talked about her. We've wow. done. We've done Carol Burnett, and I've. No, I've... but I mean Carol no, Burnett's Tarzan, 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 Tarzan yell. Yeah. The Tarzan oh, yell. Oh, one say. of her signature things. Yes. I think yeah. we could have. Correct. And in fact, we've been working at it. We may still. I still hold out hope. We may get Carol Burnett as a guest. She might be on the show. Yes, she has said yes a number of times. Oh uh, my god! But it hadn't worked out. Yeah. I mean, that would be that's like we we had wow. Mel Brooks lined up, and we were incredibly excited that Mel oh, Brooks, gosh. and they canceled like the last minute. You know, uh, something whatever happened. Well, you, but you that? know what? That's great. You're you're coming. Cl- it's wonderful that you're coming close to right. getting these people. You just keep the you know keep the fishing line in there. And if they don't come on, sometimes we in, we have them on as guests anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we we've done that. Where we've done shows where we uh, uh, profess that they're on and, and, and they're on the phone, and, and we just keep on talking and talking and not let them. They can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> and then they end up hanging <laughs> up the phone. We never spoke. But we to had them on the show. <laughs> I I do like the part. I do like the parts where you're comparing the, how things have changed and and stuff like that like the drive-in movie that would be really interesting and <clears throat> how things have evolved over time and yet stayed the same in some ways exactly and, and you know, maybe they've gotten better in some ways or maybe worse like well, i think that question of like is this worse now or better or you know is something people could argue about and debate and get in on their conversation and it doesn't end too i mean it's constant no matter what and we went a little bit of a difficult time with there's not a lot of entertainment being produced right now but that doesn't mean that that we can't do this but um right and i think know. like some t- i think they are starting to and that's the other thing i would be so interested in hearing about is how are they how are they doing shows now because they are doing it there's Saturday Night Live. There, there are TV shows that are back filming and stuff like that. And it would be really interesting to know what the behind the scenes are. Like, are they quarantining? Are they, you know, I don't know. Um, maybe you get know. somebody from a show that's taping now, like on on to talk about that. Correct. That uh, we could do that. We had Manny Cotto on, who's doing a new show called Next. I know people probably aren't familiar with it, but it's brand new. It's only had three episodes out. But he, um, he's really was a, a good. Good interview and a, a good friend of the show. Just uh, he's a producer writer, so that's somebody we would you would think would be the way to go with that. You know, like how are you coping with this and how? Because new product is being produced. There's no doubt, right? There's new Goldbergs. Yeah. There's new Star Trek discoveries and so on. So not a bad idea. So we have one minute left, Michelle. After all of this, here's the question: Would you tune yes. in to Everything Old Is New again next week, or even this week to hear our show about? Uh, uh, well, whatever it might be, Thanksgiving uh, holidays to barbecue guys to to these topics of of pop culture to quizzes to whatever it might be that we're doing. Uh, would you roll with us on this, or uh, w- would you say it's appointment radio? Or where do you definitely. go? Definitely, no. I think you guys should 
double down on your, you know, your, your commitment to this. And, and I think it's wonderful. And I think it could really take off. I appreciate that. There you go, David. Are you listening? I am. I, I'm, I, I was worried about what your reaction would be, Michelle, but I'm glad it's positive. How about yeah, that? and I'm not, I'm not just, I have absolutely no reason to, um, you know, because it takes my lovely husband away from me right. for hours, every, a couple of Saturdays. So, you know, I'm just kidding. It's fine. <laughs> you can have <laughs> him. <love> he... <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I'm just saying, like, if I thought he was wasting his right. time, I'd, I'd be honest with him. Right, but exactly. I think it's awesome. And I think you should commit even more fully to it and making it happen and a thing. I appreciate that. I'm doing the best we can. I would agree with you on that. We're up to, up to 45 stations, and they seem to be coming a little bit faster now. So um, that would be nice. We went, you know, the magic number is like 100. You get up to 100, you supposedly you're, you know, you've made a certain level, whatever. But point is, it doesn't matter. We're doing it for fun. We're doing it to enjoy uh, and to spread the word. But I agree with you 100%. Uh, it would be nice to, to just, you know, have the word spread a little bit more. So that's why it's great to have you on the show to give a point of view for a non-listener for now, right? I appreciate that. So thank you for taking your time. Thank you for lending us David Cohen every so often. And, uh, boy, I'll My tell pleasure. you what. We're looking forward to have you back at least, uh, at least uh, you know, to to join the, the rogues gallery. You have a, a, somebody that keeps on visiting the show every so often for different points of view. We had a great time nice. with you, and uh, thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy the day. Come on back next week for more pop culture entertainment on Everything Old is New Again. Mm-hmm.